the 16th century, everybody danced, everybody sang, but now we might see those things here and there on their own, but uh, the amazing part of this project is that they're all together in the same place. Magical comedy is uh, the use of generally five-part vocal texture uh, with texts talking about Commedia dell'arte characters. What's interesting is that the character in Commedia dell'arte they represent um, all the different people in the society. And because you, uh, you play with, with mask, it's interesting because you, you can uh, play different characters and you can transform yourself because you, you, ha you have a mask on. Okay, here we go. Madrigals encompass every emotion. You have madrigals that tear your heart out, you have madrigals that make you laugh, full of double entendre, full of all sorts of ridiculous foolishness. Uh, this program features quite a lot of music by Orazio Vecchi and also a little bit of Adriano Banchieri. And uh, these guys were especially adept. I mean, the madrigal had already been around for quite a few decades. And um, what they're able to do with it is at once very sophisticated, but very direct. And musically, it's incredibly satisfying all at the same time. Whether it is serious and heart-wrenching or whether it is foolish and fr frivolous, the music is beautiful. It's evocative. It's strong. <laughs> We know in early music, and especially in 16th century music, that a lot of the music is connected to dancing, but there are so few specialists that we very, very rarely uh, get a chance to watch those bodies moving and doing that choreography, and that tells us so much about how to play the music. So, every chord then starts with a reverenza. So you do a reverence, and the reverence is the same for the man and the woman. And then you do a continenza. It's a sidestep. Dance is a very important uh, aspect of this period. Uh, it was the time where socially you can flirt and you could show who you are. And then you start to dance, passo puntato, passo puntato. It's important in the history of dance as well because there, there was a manual that came out. So you have dancing masters uh, of the period that wrote manual uh, for probably nobility and for them to know what to do. And we have this step, which we say you will say it's a Charleston, but it's not. It was done in the Renaissance and it's called uh, a seguidi minimi. Seguito yeah, you're minimi. good. A lot of people cannot do it. They do, they do this, they do the washing, they do the wipers. <laughs> it's more difficult going to the left. Yeah, and you can do it turning. Oh, you wow. can. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy the beautiful music of the 16th century and early 17th century and the dancing and aspects of theater that were all part of uh, the culture at the time and that's a very rare occurrence that a concert goer gets to have all those things at once. Mm -hmm. 